So this morning I felt um, moved to speak about fear versus trust. And, and usually what I do is when I'm thinking about what am I going to talk about or what am I going to be moved to speak on, I speak on that which I'm struggling with. So these days, lately, I have been in a, a place of fear. And it's, it's fear about a lot of different things, but in particular, fear about the future. And so I really felt moved to reflect on fear versus trust. And so before we start to talk about what fear means, I thought I would, as the teacher in me, define what fear means. So I looked it up, and fear is defined as alarm and agitation caused by an expectation of danger. So I was kind of comforted by hearing that it, it was actually an expectation of danger, not necessarily a guarantee that danger would actually happen. Now what I know about fear is that it's a feeling that invokes a lot of other feelings in me. Anxiety, worry, concern, dread, mostly doom, and the <laughs> worst possible thing can happen. And you know what, if I think about it long enough, I'm actually afraid of everything. I'm afraid of what you might think, I'm afraid of you, I'm afraid what might happen tomorrow, I'm afraid what strangers might do to me, I'm afraid to take a risk and fail, afraid of getting hurt, not having enough money, fear of what might happen or not happen. Stop. Please. <laughs> well, fear, I've been told, is actually false evidence appearing real. It's about future thinking. You know, it hasn't happened yet, right? I think it's true based on some sketchy information, but actually, it's just an expectation that something bad might happen or something bad is happening. I'm reminded of a wonderful uh, allegorical novel that I read in the 70s called Hind's Feet on High Places. I don't know if anybody has uh, read that book, but there's a character in there called Much Afraid. And her journey is all about getting away from her fearing family, kind of like a dysfunctional family that she grew up in. And she's moved to go to high places of the shepherd. She's guided by two companions, sorrow and suffering. It's actually based on a book of the Old Testament, Habakkuk, where the Lord says, uh, the Lord God is my strength and will make my feet like hinds feet and will make me to walk upon high places. Now, I remember when I first read that book back in the 70s, I so identified with this character much afraid. She was afraid of everything. So was I. Now, I think that she's probably the main character because we're supposed to identify with her because I think that a lot of us are afraid. I think that a lot of us live in fear. So if we all have this fear thing going on, is there any relief? I've been told, and I'm sure you have too, that the answer lies in faith. Whenever I say to somebody, I'm in fear, they say to me, that's because you're not in faith. So, all right, what is faith? Faith in what? Faith in who? Faith in God, right? I mean, we're, we're in a chapel, so you're going to assume that I'm going to talk about faith in God. But who is God? Where is God? You know, my fear is so strong at times, it cripples me. And sometimes my fear, I can taste it, feel it, touch it. It's very evident, but God, where is God? Who is God? For me, sometimes God is, is hard to see and hard to grasp, but then I'm kind of like relieved because when I look at the Tao Te Ching, they talk about the divine in this way. Look, it cannot be seen. It is beyond form. Listen cannot be heard. It is beyond sound. Grasp, it cannot be held. It is intangible. So I'm like kind of comforted by that because if the Tao Te Ching is talking about, listen, you're not going to, you maybe not going to see it. Maybe it's more about knowing and experiencing it than seeing it. 
You see, because the fear I can feel and I can see, I can feel it in every aspect of my being. Faith in something not seen is a bit of a challenge. So faith means belief in the truth, value, or trustworthiness of someone or something. Something I can trust in. So then I'm thinking trust is different than faith. So faith is this belief and this knowing in something or someone, this entity. But trust is the outcome. So I have to have faith first. Once I have faith, I'm able to trust. And so the trust part is actually the action. So I was thinking about the post office. I was actually thinking about the postal service. We kind of have faith in the postal service. We have faith that they'll deliver. The trust comes when we actually mail the letter. So the faith part is the belief that this thing exists, and then the trust is in the action. So what is my faith? Here's, I'm gonna share my faith with you. I believe that there is divine intelligence. I believe there is divine source. That it always has been and it always will be, that it's always existed, that it's all-knowing, that it's all-powerful. This entity, this being, this energy, look, maybe that's it, <laughs> maybe they're calling us. <laughs> some people call it God, some people call it Brahman, the Hindus call it Brahman, Muslims call Allah, Yahweh, great spirit. Look, you know, the bottom line is that it doesn't matter what we call it called by many names, but it is made manifest in all I see. I see it especially in nature, in the winged ones, in the flowers, in the eyes of my dog. I see divine intelligence in the sun rising and setting every single day. I see it in the fact that the earth spins on its axis. I know that this divine intelligence is as expansive as the cosmos and yet as personal as my heartbeat. Islam teaches that the divine is as close as the vein in my neck. Now this divine energy, it manifests itself through me, through you. So when you're kind to me, there's the divine. When I'm kind to you, and I'm loving to you, that's the face of God. There's the evidence. So the evidence of the divine for me is obvious when I look over my life and how I've always been okay, no matter what. Even when I feared the worst would happen, and even if the worst did happen, I was still okay. So faith in this divine entity is the knowing that all will be well, no matter what. That something divine and bigger than you and me has our back. Now we hear about faith in all of the sacred texts. We hear about faith in some of the heroes and, and heroines in our sacred texts, like Abraham, like Noah, like Rama, like Jesus. In the book of Hebrew, Paul says, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. God incidences, not coincidences, God incidences. In Matthew, in, the, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus talks about Stop wasting your time worrying. Why are you worrying about tomorrow? And he points to nature as an example and says, look at the birds and look at the flowers, how beautiful they're clothed. In the Bhagavad Gita, there's this talk between the disciple Arjuna and Krishna. And Arjuna is kind of like sharing with Krishna. He's like concerned about the battle. He's concerned about what he's about to go into. Sounds like he might be in a little bit of fear, too. Krishna reminds him, walk through the fear. Stand up and fight. Krishna assures Arjuna that all will be well, and he says to him, if you fix your mind on God, and you're devoted, and you resign all things to God, all will be well. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a battle going on in my own head constant. And it's this battle between fear and faith. Faith and trust. Now I have faith. 
I know what I believe this higher power. And for me, like Chris's meditation, I have a divine squadron. I have the angels, the saints, the ancestors. I have spirit allies. Forget about it. I have like a whole entire <coughs> crew of divine ones and the divine source, the one. And when I go inside and I go into that temple, into that sanctuary, I know that I'm actually not this name and form. Like, I know that I am not this, this person called grace. I know that I am the self, the divine self. And so if, if I know that, then nothing else really matters. Now, I see evidence of all of this all of the time, and I believe in the, all of the sacred scriptures that talk about faith, and I, I'm a big fan of Pema Chodron. I don't know if anybody has ever read her, um, her writing. It's, it's amazing if you get a chance to, to read it, When Things Fall Apart by Pema Chodron. She's a Buddhist nun. She says in that book, the next time you encounter fear, consider yourself lucky. Because this is where the courage comes in. And this is where you become evolved. This is where the spiritual journey is taking you beyond fear, stepping into an unknown territory, continually moving you forward. When we're in the grips of fear and when things are at their most painful, when we're not seeing any evidence of the divine, when our faith is shattered or holding on by a thread, the good news is, Mail the letter. Trust and mail the letter. Faith in action is where the magic comes. Let it go and don't be like Fred Flintstone. I think that some people in the audience here who might know who Fred Flintstone is. He mailed the letter and then he got panicked. <laughs> and he went back and he tried to get the letter out. See, I, I do that. I give my will over and then I take it back. Don't take it back. Mail the letter, let it go. Have trust. That's where the magic will happen. When I relax in knowing that I am okay and that my soul, my soul, the true I am, is untouched by any adversity, that there's no past or future in the soul, then I know that all will be well. Being able to hear the voice of source, I have to get still first. I have to know who I really am. And I don't mean, don't you know who I am? That's ego, I'm talking about from the self. When I remember who I really am and listen to the voice, then I know that faith is really about face everything and remember. Mm. Faith is really like fear in disguise. Face everything and remember. What am I remembering? I'm remembering that I have not been brought this far to fail. Remember that I have been given many gifts. Remember that I have a divine squadron that has my back. And in this faith, I know that everything is unfolding exactly as it should. I have to do the footwork, though. I have to continue on the path of righteousness, the eightfold path that the Buddha talks about, right speech, right action, the path of yoga that the Hindu saints and sages taught, taught us, karma yoga, bhakti yoga. And to love your neighbor as yourself as Jesus taught. It's really simple. Experience source energy. Believe in its power. Have faith in the divine plan. Take action and trust that it's all good. It's all God. And then we can move from that character I talked about, much afraid, to joy everlasting. Namaste. Namaste.